Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one and only Pinky Cole. Let me hear it, let me hear it, let me hear it, let me hear it. Hi, everybody. Hey, Wana. Hi, Pinky, thank you. You know it never gets old watching myself. I'm like, that's me. That's you. I did all that, I did that. And more, it's coming. It's it feels still. really good, it's so humbling, and I'm yeah. just happy to be here. And it's And we're happy to have you, right? Yes. So, we're going to chat with Pinky a little bit, just get in her brain a little bit, find out why she's so amazing, what, what helps her grind, okay? So, we're Morehouse, AUC, Clark, Spelman students in the building. First, we're going to start it like this. What would be your first thing to say to a student that's sitting in the audience today, like back in the day where you were at CAU. What would you say to a kid that's hungry and, and has vision and hopes? What would you tell these students right now? When you stay ready, you ain't never got to get ready. Let me tell you something. All of my life, I prepared for this moment, right? When I was a kid growing up, throwing parties, selling candy, selling food, I was literally preparing my whole life for this. And when I say this, I mean success. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about impact, being able to reach people, helping people to create opportunities for themselves and for other people. But I did all that by staying ready. I didn't practice to come out here because I'm ready, right? You don't practice for life. You stay ready. And staying ready means always studying, figuring out ways to get better, thinking a little deeper, hanging around the right people, eliminating the wrong people. When you stay ready, you ain't never got to get ready. So for the people in the audience and for the people who are listening to this, literally, as long as you're always prepared, that moment is going to come. But when that moment comes, make sure that you're always prepared and ready for it. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Give it up, yeah. give it up. <laughs> so who is your muse? Who is the person you think that has, has instilled this getting ready vibe from you? Who, who is the person that, that put that drive on you, that just, that resiliency? Who would you say that person is in your life? Um, so it's three people. Okay. Um, the first was my father. Um, the day that I was born, my father was being sentenced to life in prison, right? The day that I was coming out the womb, right? So I watched my father end up doing 22 years in prison right? And I realized how dedicated he was behind bars, having me to read books, encouraging me to be an entrepreneur and work for myself and create my own destiny. So I got that from him, that entrepreneur mentality. And then my mother, I saw how hard she worked every single day to make sure that we had the things that we needed, not the things that we always wanted, but the things that we needed. And she was so loyal and dedicated to a company for now 34 years. So watching both my mother and my father, who are both Jamaican, by the way, right, come from humble beginnings and do the best that they could for the five children that they had, showed me something really important. It showed me that you can be committed and you can be a risk taker and you can be loyal at the same time. That third muse is my daughter. I just had a baby two months ago, almost three months ago, right? Um, and every day I look at her, I realize that you gonna quit today? When you got somebody right here, they gotta get these diapers and get this milk, you gonna quit today? When she got to grow up and she has to be able to live life knowing that she don't have to struggle because her mother worked that hard? So when I wake up and I think about my motivations and my muse, I think about those people because those people give me the ammunition to keep going. I get tired sometimes. Hell, we all do, right? But the days in which I feel tired, I think about the people who are leaning on me. I think about the people that need me, not the people that need me for like just to be around me to take pictures, not those people. <laughs> the people that need me to be better. And in order for them to be better, it requires for me to be better. So those are my muses. Yeah. All right, family. Family is everything. No matter what the dollar sign is, family. Nothing Absolutely. about money came out of her mouth. Y'all heard that, right? Family, yeah. okay? So, Pinky's doing a lot. Take us back to, first of all, how long have you been vegan? I've been vegan for almost eight years. Okay. So and I'm still thick. I can't believe it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Yeah, a lot yes. of people think when you when you go there, it's just going to go, okay, eight years. So take us back to that moment. 
and I read this online, but I want to I want to get it out because you know I had to do my research. That moment when you were home and and slutty vegan, the idea of it started, the brand started, or, or just the food truck, or how to take us back to that moment when you were home. I think that's where you were, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Correct me on that. Yeah. Take us back to that moment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take you back to before that moment happened, so it all makes sense. Can I take y'all all the way back? Take us back. Okay, so I'm gonna do this really fast. Had a restaurant in New York, grease fire, lost it all. Car got repoed, uh, got evicted out of my apartment, went flat broke, got a call from Iyanla, fixed my life. Um, do you want to work on the show as a supervisor and producer? I'm like, hell yeah, I do. So I took the, the offer, moved to Los Angeles, California, was out there for two years, came to Atlanta just for a gig, for the same gig, just to be on the ground, right? I was only supposed to be here for three months. Put a one-bedroom apartment in storage to come back to it, right? I was sitting in my bedroom one day, and I'm like, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to do this again. Don't ask me why I was ready because it was a headache. But I'm like, I'm ready to do this again. And I literally started researching and it hit like a light bulb. Slutty vegan. And I called my best friend and I said, what do you think about this idea? She was like, I love it. And then I called a couple other friends and I went to YouTube and Google University and I just started figuring it out. And then I opened up in a shared kitchen. And from that point on, the rest was history. And in three years, not only have I opened up four locations, I got two food trucks. I'm about to open up 30 locations. I got a documentary. I just signed a major book deal with uh, Simon & Schuster. I I'm about to be on the cover of a magazine. And I'm bragging now because I'm going to tell you all this ain't easy. It's been hard work, okay? But, but all of this literally is because of that one idea. Sometimes all it takes is that one idea. Burgers and fries is not new, y'all. Right? People sell burgers and fries, but it's the intention behind it. It's the story behind it. Why do you make people care? How do you evoke that feeling that make people want to follow and believe in you? So that one little idea literally changed my life. And granted, I had my dream job before, before Slutty Vegan, but now Slutty Vegan is my dream job. I get to drive to my dream every single day. A lot of people can't say that. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? I'm driving to, I pay myself a paycheck. Do you understand how good that feels? Taxes come out from my business that I own 100% of, all from an idea that I came up with in my bedroom, and that was the very best thing that could have ever happened to me. And it might sound slutty, but God is so good because he gave me the slutty vision, and it's taken off like a rocket. Yeah. yeah, and we love it, right? Yeah. We are here for it. We love slutty vegan. So if you haven't tried it, you are missing out on a treat. You are missing out on a treat. And I was vegan for a few months, but, you know, that didn't. The <laughs> pandemic threw me off. Okay, it you threw did me an A off. for effort. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It threw me off. But, we, we, you know, we was, we was vegan for, for a minute. And, but, you know, we working on it. God's still working cool. on us. God's still working on us. <laughs> so through all the achievements, mm -hmm. there's also something close to your heart, which is philanthropy. Yes. And... You have an organization, and you do things in that organization. Tell me what inspired uh, Pinky Cole's foundation or, you know, you actually wanting to. There's a mindset for entrepreneurs called live to give, where what she's doing, she talked about, right? But take us into that where you're like, oh, I'm successful. My idea is flourishing, but it's not all about this. I want to do something. Take us behind the philanthropy ideas and your heart behind that. So I've always been a giver. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but y'all can understand this. I was Miss Clark Atlanta University when I was in school, right? Um, and even way before Slutty Vegan and before all of the businesses and all the good stuff that I was doing, I was giving back as Miss CAU. I joined Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I was giving back there. Hey, Soros, wherever y'all are, hey. <laughs> um, and I watched my mother growing up as a kid. And anybody Caribbean in here? Right? So... Y'all wouldn't understand where I'm coming from when I say this. Like, we help any and everybody. Like, if you Jamaican, I'm Jamaican, okay, you my cousin. Come move in with me, right? So my mother would help everybody. And as a kid, I never understood it because I'm like, why are you helping everybody and you sacrifice us for Christmas and for holidays? But now I got older, I realized she was really teaching me how to be selfless, right? So in my selflessness, I just really needed to formalize me giving my money away to people and helping people <laughs> and giving them opportunities. And I came up with the Pinky Co. Foundation because I really love to see other people win. It's not enough for me to get the success on my own if nobody else around me is not winning. Like, it don't make sense. Like, it's a formula 
for, for, for disaster, right? And when we look at other cultures, we talk about the ecosystems that they create. Why can't we create those ecosystems? So I'm doing that through the Pinky Co. Foundation, and we've done so much, some which we talk about, some which we don't talk about. Um, but for the bulk of it, we've done great things. Uh, we've paid the balances off for 30 Clark Atlanta University students so that they could graduate, right? Um, Rashad Brooks, who was murdered in the Wendy's parking lot, myself and another partner, uh, we provided $600,000 worth of scholarships for the kids to go to school in partnership with CAU, life insurance, a brand new car for the family. Um, I partnered with uh, Steve Harvey and the Marjorie Harvey Foundation to provide lights for families in Atlanta. We've given away cars, donated thousands of pounds of fruits and vegetables to people in the community. We paid the rents for local businesses in the community so that they didn't have to close because of COVID. Uh, we've partnered with Impossible Foods and Jermaine Dupree to get people excited about voting. And I believe that we helped to turn Georgia blue with our efforts. Um, we, we, we've literally, you hear that? <laughs> and, and I can go on and on and on of all the things that we've done, but like, that's the real fun part of all of this, right? I tell people this all the time. People are like, how do you feel? Yeah, this, but I'm like, slutty vegan is cool, right? Like that pays the bills and that makes all the money. But like what makes my belly leap is to know that I've been able to utilize my resources and my platform to help somebody win and somebody to be better. Like, that feels good to me. So the foundation has done great work. Um, we're about to do even greater work. Oh, I didn't even mention this part. Um, myself and Derek Hayes from Big Dave's Cheesesteaks, uh, we partnered to do an initiative where we get every single black man in Atlanta, if they make $30,000 or less, life insurance that they don't have to pay for. They get to pick their beneficiaries, yes, and their policy. And that part of it feels good. So I'm excited about the work that we're doing. So I'm literally growing two or well, three different empires at the same time. <laughs> Segway. That was one of my yes. questions. <laughs> what does the Pinky Cole Enterprise look like? You just you just yes. announced something on on social media, a new a new vegan brand you brought out. Yes. Where do you envision the Pinky Cole Enterprise? Because that's what it is, ladies. You're looking at a mogul here. <laughs> She's building. She's building a mogul, right? Pay attention, okay? Where, where is the Pinky Cole Enterprise going? I know that the sky is beyond the limit. You're going yes. to the moon, right? So tell us a little bit if you, if you can. Absolutely. Um, so, so I'll speak practically and like reimagining where I want to be, right? Um, so right now the Pinky Enterprise looks like Slutty Vegan. It looks like um, Bar Vegan. I don't know if you guys ever been in Pond City Market. Um, it also looks like... Um, I got so many businesses, CBD gummies, um, That's what I I'm managing talent, I do everything, right? Um, but Slutty Vegan is the umbrella. So imagine an umbrella or octopus per se, right, with legs. So I'm building all of these legs, so I'm working on movies and documentaries and cookbooks, and I just signed a major deal, which I can't wait to announce, um, to do a shoe brand with one of the top companies in the world. Slutty Vegan is about to be a shoe. Because it's bigger than burgers and fries. It's so bigger than burgers. You and heard fries. it first. So when you see it, be like, I already knew that. Um, but yeah, so so I have that and then so so many great things that are happening. So what I'm able to do with this enterprise is build upon these legs, right? I'm the type of person, and I think that there's some other people in the audience. I'm a jack of all trades, and I'm a master of all of them, too, okay? Because I like to do so Say many it. things, right? You remember back in the day, people used to be like, you need to focus, you need to, yes, focus, but you still are able to do all of the things that you love if you're strategic about it. And my strategy is putting all those things under the slutty vegan brand, the movie, the shoes, the documentary, the cookbooks, the this, the this, and all of these things live under that one brand, so I'm growing this whole enterprise and empire, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited because I didn't look into a book to get the blueprint for this. I'm just learning as I go. I'm not sitting here like I'm the expert and let me teach you. Some days I'd be like, let me Google this. What does this mean? Right? It, it took me two years to learn about equity and safe notes and all of that stuff, to be honest. Right? Because they don't teach us that in school. Right? But when I think about the enterprise, I'm really being the change that I want to, wish to see. I want people to look at me and see this young black girl from East Baltimore with locks, just a little thick on the side, and I love it, by the way, right? But I want people to see that and say, I can do anything that I want to do because Pinky Cole did it. Because Pinky Cole did yeah. it. Yeah. And you can't be what you can't see, people. Yeah. You can't be what you can't see. So I'm going to do something off script. Is there any question for the audience? 
Any question? Does anyone in the audience have a question? Yes. We might can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. So I understood the assignment, <laughs> like the young people say. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I can I put a PSA before we close? No. Go ahead. Okay. So this empire that I was just telling y'all about, I'm actually hiring for this empire, right? And when I say hiring, I'm building a team. So I'm looking for executive teams. I'm looking for people who are just graduating out of college, just looking for a good opportunity to grow. I'm looking for people in my corporate department. So if you're looking to be a part of a family that's really going to be a billion dollar company, not just for money, but for impact, send me an email um, at careers at sluttyveganatl.com and I would love to talk to you. Yeah. So with that, good plug, one of the things that you notice about the environment when you go into Slutty Vegan is all the employees are happy. Oh, they make these videos. They, I don't even know, cause you know, I'm a little older, <laughs> so I can't keep up with the TikTok stuff and all that, but they are very relevant to the culture and they have fun doing it. So one of the questions we, we talked about as we prep for the interview is, is what is the culture that, that we think that it is to work for Pinky? What is it that's so special to be an employee under that Pinky Cole Enterprise that you bring that most rigid or structured entrepreneurs, you know, don't. What do you do differently? Well, first of all, I'm not a structured entrepreneur, <laughs> right? And and that's really one of the key ingredients. Like, I don't want a stuffy company. Yeah. I didn't create Slutty Vegan to be stuffy. I always had this mentality that, like, I do not want to sit behind a desk. And I wanted to create something that's so welcoming to people. And I'll give you an example. You know, we go to restaurants. There's this thing in the black community that, like, black-owned restaurants aren't organized. They don't have it together. Like, they're mean. And I'm like, I'm changing that narrative. Yeah. I want when you come into my, my place of uh, business that you are so pleasantly surprised that one is organized. And, yeah, we slip up sometimes. But for the most part, it's organized. Um, the customer service is A1 right? And you get a quality product and you're happy about it, even if you had to wait an hour in line. So that <laughs> culture, it's a requirement when you work for Slutty Vegan. I tell my employees all the time, if you're not having fun, go home. Okay. If you're here for a paycheck, go home. Because I don't want people that are just here for a paycheck. It doesn't benefit me. They got to be in alignment with my vision. And my vision is to grow this empire in a way that the world has never seen it before. And I'm on track to do that. And if, you, if you're committed and serious about doing that, you got to look at this beyond just a J-O-B. You got to look at this as something that you're, you're helping to build, which is why when you look on our social media, we, we put all the employees on the page. Every single person that you see on Slutty Vegan's page, the talent, the, the skits, every single person is an employee and gets paid at Slutty Vegan because now we're showcasing talent. We're showing our employees that we see you beyond you just putting an apron on and clocking in. We want you to win. Somebody may discover you if you know how to sing, if you know how to act. So the culture here is very guerrilla marketing style, very engaging and opening, and we want you to be yourself because that's the only way you could be. That sounds like a model other corporations could use. They absolutely to should. To really, really boost morale with their employees. That, that, that and they're really doing sounds it now. like a model that yeah. employees could, could they're use. They're doing it now. Yeah. And, and I believe that they, they see what Slutty Vegan is doing and taking a page out of our book, which I appreciate because that means that we're doing something right. So we're yeah. doing something right. We're going to commercialize that too. Yes. All right. So I have one final question, I think. Um, what would be your, from your, your, your grows and your glows through becoming the slutty vegan owner, what would be the top three tips you would give to, say, a future entrepreneur watching us live or any student in the audience? What would be your top three tips? Um, so the first one is I want you to fail. And when I say that, I want you to have the speed bumps. 
I want you to have those hiccups. Like, it ain't supposed to all be good. Let it be bad sometimes so that you can learn how to do it better the next time, right? Like, sometimes it's okay for those hiccups because those hiccups are really just lessons to be learned. It's like expensive school. Do you know how many times I done went to Clark Atlanta University <laughs> outside of Clark Atlanta University? Because I paid for those expensive lessons. So it's okay to fail, and failure is not failure at all. That's just a word. It's the power that you put behind that. That's the first thing. The second thing is, and this is what I live by every day, those who take chances make advances. There's never a chance that I miss, ever. Oh, I'm going to go for it. Listen, I got a heart of steel, because guess what? You can say no to me, but no don't hurt. So if you take a chance, you will almost, I can guarantee you 99.9.5% that you will achieve your wildest dreams if you take that chance. That thing that scares the hell out of you, do that thing. Because if you do that thing, all the things that you want will come to you. And then the last piece of this, oh, this, this will be a good one. Success is like mud. You throw something on the wall, something going to stick. Throw something on the wall. Keep throwing it on the wall. Keep throwing. If you keep throwing, something will stick. I threw throwing parties. I threw selling McChickens in high school. I threw selling frozen cups and like being in pageants. And I, and I threw moving to California with $250 and a duffel bag and a suitcase to follow my dreams of being an actress. Like I threw all those things on the wall. I became a television producer. I was a producer for The Maury Show, a casting director. I worked on tons of shows. I kept throwing stuff on the wall. And do you know the slutty vegan stuck? So I say all that to say, just keep throwing. Something is going to stick. And I'm living proof of it. This is my testimony. Yeah. That's it, y'all. We want to thank Pinky Cole for her time. We appreciate it. And her, her, her team, they are fantastic. They are fantastic. So we thank you. And I think we're going to break for uh, intermission for a few minutes. So for the TEDx experience, I want you all to go out. There's food out in the lobby. Uh, take pictures. You can meet some of our speakers. The first act of our speakers, um, you can chat with them. And um, there's a 3D booth out. Take pictures. Tag us on IG. Tag us on Twitter. Tag us on Facebook. Hashtag TEDx Morehouse College. Remember, we have to put the full name, okay? Um, go out, have fun, and we'll see you in about 20 minutes, all right?